Hallelujah. Are you blessed, church? Yes. Amen. Are you blessed? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Amen, church? Not only is Jesus is alive, but Jesus is alive in us. Amen? And uh, as we go to another part of our worship to the Lord, as we settle down and receive the word that the Lord has prepared for us this afternoon, I just encourage us to continue to dwell and ponder on that song, The Love of Jesus, The Love of God. Amen? Because... As you ponder on that word, the love of God, that in itself is more than enough to contain us. It is more than enough to consume us. Amen. It is more than enough to fill us. Amen, church. And we pray by faith that the message of the love of Jesus will continue through the words this afternoon. Once again, good and blessed afternoon. And to all the people who are gathered online, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Hallelujah. Can I invite each and every one, let us stand up to welcome the word of the Lord. And the word today can be found in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verses 13 to 17. And I believe that we are very familiar with this encounter, with this story. The word of the Lord says, Later on, they sent some of the Pharisees and Herodians to Jesus to catch him in his words. They came to him and said, Teacher, we know you are a man of integrity you aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are, but you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay or shouldn't we? But Jesus knew their hypocrisy why are you trying to trap me, he asked. Bring me a denarius and let me look at let me look at it. They brought the coin and he asked them, Whose portrait is this? And whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then Jesus said to them, Gave to Caesar what is Caesar's? And to God, what is God's? And they were amazed at him. Let us pray. Our most gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for gathering us today. Thank you, Father God, because we know and we do believe that there are no central purpose of us coming together but to worship you, to honor you, to elevate your name most high, Father God. Lord, it is our prayer that we will be able to give what you deserve this afternoon. It is our desire to be able to lift up to you your portion this afternoon. It is therefore we pray, we desire for the power, the enablement, for the lead and guide of your Holy Spirit to enable us to do so. Lord, with the power that you have given to the believers, Father, we take authority, Lord, over all the works of the enemy and whatever disturbances and hindrances and distractions, Father God, that will hinder us in receiving your full measure. And Father, we cast them out in Jesus' name right now. As for your servant, Lord, continue to hide me behind you. Let all my brothers and sisters it's not gonna concentrate or it's not gonna look at this um, uh, physical facade, Father. But your glory, your grace, and your mercy that enabled me to stand here 
to share the words that you have prepared. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's all be seated. Hallelujah, my dear brothers and sisters. The title of our message today is, and it's a form of a question as well. Whose image is in you? Amen. Whose image is in us? Whose image do we bear? Whose inscription do we bear? Amen? Amen, church? So, just a scenario. We were traveling here. We, uh, um, Mary Ann was um, uh, sharing to uh, Doc Eman in to Boots. You know this, um, uh, it's summer, right? The summer is coming and as you drive in the road, there, is, there are these grasses with the yellow flowers. And Marianne was saying that they are called dandelions. Amen? Do you know that, guys? It's called dandelion, apparently. Amen? And so I ask, what about the, those white, smaller flowers next to them? Oh, daisies. Um, eventually, Marianne have a look at it, and it is called daisies. But on the way of looking at it, when we are stuck, we said that those white ones are called dandy tigers. Okay? <laughs> dandy tigers. So, my dear brothers and sisters, if we are stuck in a situation, for example, this afternoon, if we are stuck in this building and there's only two exits, one exit is the front and one exit is at the back. And all wind come and said, come on, chop, chop, I need you to be out of the building right now. And five seconds, if you go to the front, there is a lion awaiting. If you go to the back, there is a tiger awaiting, both equally hungry. So what would you do when, in fact, we plead with Alwyn and said, no, Alwyn said, no, you have to be out in five seconds. So my point in there, my dear brothers and sisters, is have you been stuck in a situation where it is a new win situation? Yeah? Have you been stuck in a situation where it is a new win situation or it is a lose-lose situation? Meaning, whatever you choose to do, it will lead to a loss. Whatever decision that you will do, it will lead to a loss. Whether you choose to go out of the front, you'll end up be devoured by the lion. If you end up running at the back, you will end up devoured by the tiger. So at the end of the day, it's your choice whether you will end up in the belly of the lion or end up in the belly of a tiger, but still, it is a lose-lose situation. Amen. What would you do in such a difficult situation? What would you do? Have you been in a difficult situation like that where there is no escape? There is no win? It's gonna be lost, my dear brothers and sisters. And I'll tell you this afternoon, Jesus was exactly in the same situation. Jesus in the scripture that we read was exactly in the same situation. Amen? The Pharisee in one hand, amen, who are the Pharisee? We know, my dear brothers and sisters, that the Pharisee, they are the ruling party within the Jewish religion, within the Jewish sect. They are the ruling party. They are so powerful. They orchestrated the death, the suffering of Jesus Christ, amen? And we can read through the Bible, as Jesus Christ ministered, the Pharisees were always there. Amen. Against Jesus Christ. So we can see in one end, the Pharisees are there. They are the religious party. They comprise the majority, the ruling party, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. And what these religious or what these Pharisees believes in, they believe in the traditions. They believe in the law written by Moses. 
That's the reason why there are many clashes with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. On the other hand, we have the Herodians. By the term Herod. Remember King Herod? King Herod, my dear brothers and sisters, within the province of Judea in Jerusalem, he is the governor. King Herod, he is the one that was authorized by Rome, by the Roman Empire to be the governor of Judea and Jerusalem. Why Herod, my dear brothers and sisters? Because Herod is a half-half, mestizo, half Roman, half Jewish. That's the reason why the kingdom of Rome has authorized King Herod to be the governor of Judea and Jerusalem. In these Herodians, my dear brothers and sisters, they follow King Herod. And what do they follow? They are pro-Rome. They are pro-government, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? So we can see in one end, there is this Pharisee that is pro-community. There is this Pharisees who are pro-Jewish people. And on the other hand, we have the Herodians who are pro-Roman Empire, who are pro-Roman government. Amen? And because they are pro-Roman government, they perceive that the pure teaching of Jesus Christ is antagonistic to Rome. Amen? They believe that the pure teaching of Jesus Christ is antagonistic to Rome. So can you see, my dear brothers and sisters, that even these Pharisees and even these Herodians, although they sit far away from that political and religious spectrum, they connive together. Tell me who your enemy are, and they will be my enemy. That's what they did. Amen. Both the Pharisee and the Herodians, they connive together. And what is their aim? According to the passage that we have read in here, my dear brothers and sisters, it says in there, they sent the Pharisees and the Herodians to catch Jesus Christ in His words. Amen. In the version of Matthew, in Matthew chapter 22, verse 15, in the same account, it says in there, the Pharisee and the Herodians went out and they laid plans to trap Jesus Christ in His words. Worse, in Luke chapter 20, verse 20, in the same account, it says in there that the Pharisee and the Herodians, they keep a close watch on Jesus. They sent spies who pretended to be honest, because they hope to catch Jesus in something he said so that they might have a hand, that they might hand him over to the power and authority of the governor. Amen. So, they thought they found a perfect timing. They thought they, thought they found their chance. Amen. Imploring the same tactics that the devil used. You know, pay attention. This is how the devil always operate. Remember, when the devil tried to deceive Jesus Christ in the, in, the, in the wilderness, in the desert, amen, he came and he presented the word of God to Jesus. Even when the devil deceived Adam and Eve in the garden, the devil came and presented the word of God. Is it true that when you eat of these fruits, you will die? Certainly not. Amen. When the devil deceived Jesus, trying to deceive Jesus in the wilderness, the Bible says that if you jump, he will send his angels to come and catch you so that your feet will not land in the stone. In the same way, my dear brothers and sisters, these people came, my dear brothers and sisters, and what did they say to Jesus? Jesus, or teacher, we know that you are a man of integrity. Wow. 
You are neither swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are. But you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Wow. Remember that? Just to put Jesus Christ perhaps in a situation, in a position, my dear brothers and sisters, of being of guard. Amen. And that always is the works, the wiles, and the schemes of the enemy. That always is the tactics of the enemy. Pay attention. The tactics of the enemy, in the beginning, it seems right. In the beginning, it sounds right. In the beginning, it looks right. That's why the enemy is called the counterfeit. Amen, church? Because what a counterfeit does is, as, as much as possible, it will mimic the original. It will copy the original. Amen. A counterfeit is, my dear brothers and sisters, it will not make itself obvious that it's different from the reality, from the truth. Amen, church? So the Bible warned us. The Bible did not fall short in warning us. Be careful, my brethren, it says in there. Be cautious, be vigilant. Amen? Paul even said to Timothy, and I want to remind us all this afternoon, I want to remind us all today with the encouragement of Apostle Paul to his disciple Timothy. What was his encouragement to Timothy, my dear brothers and sisters? To study and to learn in order to rightly divide the Word of God. Amen, church. Yeah? It's one thing studying the Word of God. It's another thing learning about the Word of God. But it is even a grand thing that the byproduct of your learning in studying the Word of God, it will lead you to rightly divide the word of the Lord. And as a believer, that's what we need. Yun po yung kailangan natin. It is not enough for us to read the word of God. It is not enough for us to study the word of God. But let us ask the Lord for discernment so that we can rightly divide the word of the Lord. Amen, church. So we are being encouraged to be cautious, to be vigilant, my dear brothers and sisters. This afternoon, we are being encouraged once again how studying the Word of God is important. How reading our Bible is important. We are so blessed that we all have this mobile phone now and you can access the Bible in there by any means possible, any app possible. And the bonus is you can access it in whatever translation. You can access it even in our native tongue. But there is nothing better than having a physical Bible. Amen. Having a physical Bible. Because if you go to the mountain, no signal. And you cannot access your Bible. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. So this afternoon, I want to encourage us again. As someone bearing the image of God, as someone bearing the inscription of the Lord, Give unto Caesar what is due to Caesar and give to the Lord what is due to the Lord. As a Christian, as a believer, we need to be reading the Word of God. We need to be reading the Word of God in order for us to be able to rightly divide it. To be able for us to rightly handle the truth behind it. To be able for us to understand and interpret it properly. Amen, church? John 8.32, what did John 8.32 said? By reading the Bible, you will know the truth. You will learn about the truth. And it is this truth that will make one free, that can set one free. Amen, church? It is not the Bible that can set you free, that can 
make you free. It is the message within that Bible that if we grasp on that message, that message of truth, who is no other than Jesus Christ, no? John 14, 6, He is the way, the truth, and the life. That no one can come to the Father except through Jesus, the truth. Amen. And how can we know Jesus? By knowing about the truth, the very core of the Word of God. Amen. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, it says in here, The enemy, the devil, Satan, is roaring like a counterfeit lion. That's why, once again, the, the word of the Lord encourages us to be alert, to be of sober mind, my dear brothers and sisters, because he is seeking for someone to devour. And our prayer is, let not be me, Lord. Amen. Amen. Let not be me, O God. Lord, you have inscribed me in the palm of your hands. Lord, you have grabbed hold of me in the palm of your hands. Therefore, I have the understanding. So as long as I remain in your hand, O God, that I will not be snatched. That I will not be devoured. Amen, church. 2 Corinthians 11.14 Satan, even Satan, disguises himself as the angel of light. And in order for us to know that, we need to know the truth. We need to know the truth. And the truth can be found in the messages of these words. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. And so they thought we corner Jesus in a no-win situation. We corner Jesus in a loss-loss situation. Let's throw him this question. It is the perfect opportunity. Amen. So what is that question that they throw on Jesus? Jesus, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? What about you if you were asked of that? Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? It was not a mere question of yes or no. This is what in their mind, this is what they thought, that it is a mere question of saying yes or a mere question of saying no. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar? Should we pay or should we not? It was a trick question, my dear brothers and sisters. And the Pharisee knows it. The Herodians knows it. But more than that, Jesus knows it. Amen. Because you know, if Jesus will answer no, if Jesus will say, if Jesus will answer no, the Herodians, a part of the government, would charge Jesus with treason. He is teaching the people not to pay taxes, not to pay their dues. He is teaching the people against Rome. But if Jesus said yes, the Pharisee would accuse Jesus of disloyalty to the culture, to the Jewish faith, my dear brothers and sisters, to the Jewish nation. He would lose the support of the crowd. Imagine, they told him, we know that you are a man of integrity. You do not consider other people. You teach the truth. But if Jesus said, yes, it is lawful. Yes, it is right to pay taxes. Those people will say, ah, he is a man of no integrity after all. He is a man who does not preach the truth. But he is a man who buckled because of pressure. That's probably what they will say, my dear brothers and sisters. So the question to pay taxes or not to pay taxes. Again, the, the question is a designed in a no-win situation. The question is designed in a lose-lose situation. But like I say, the Pharisee knows that, the Herodians know that, but moreover, Jesus Christ knows that. 
What is the reply of Jesus? Jesus, aware of their malicious scheme, said, Why do you put me to test? Amen. That's what Jesus said. Why do you put me to test? Remember that lady that was caught in John chapter 8, that lady that was caught with adultery? They brought the same question to Jesus. Jesus, according to the law of Moses, if we caught someone with adultery, let us stone them to death. What said you? If Jesus said, yes, let's stone her to death, what will the people say? Oh, I thought, he is the son of God, full of grace, full of compassion. Why did she condemn the woman? But if Jesus will say, no, let us not stone her to death, what will the people say? Oh, she is, he is going against the law of Moses. So what did Jesus said? He did not answer yes or no. What did Jesus said? Let anyone who has no sin cast the first stone. Amen, church. It's a brilliant answer. Because, yes, Jesus said, according to the law, yes, we must stone the woman. But according to the compassion that comes from the Lord, let anyone who has no sin be the first one to cast a stone. Amen, church. And it is the same in this situation, my dear brothers and sisters. To pay taxes or not to pay taxes. What did Jesus said? He did not say yes or no. What did Jesus said? Bring me a denarius. Bring me a denarius and let me look at it. They brought the coin and he asked them, whose image is in this? And whose inscription is in this? They said, it's Caesar's. Amen. It's Caesar's. So my dear brothers and sisters, once again, Jesus Christ put an end on the, their foolish tactics. Because Jesus did not say, yes, it is lawful. Jesus did not say, no, it is not lawful. What did Jesus said? Bring me a denario. What is written? Whose picture is in the denarius? Whose inscription is in the denarius? They said Caesar. That means it belongs to Caesar. This means that this is Caesar's. Amen. If you find something, if you found a jacket that does not belong to you, what do you do? Do you wear it? Do you keep it? You found a jacket and it's written Albert. You return it to Albert because it's owned by Albert. And it is very same thing, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. Jesus said, bring me a denarius. So not only is that the picture of Caesar is there, but there is as well written in there. Isn't it like even our bonds nowadays? Did you know that your bond, your money, even if you earn it, it is against the law to destroy it? It is against the law to destroy it. Because the state, the country reserved the right to it. Even you said, oh, I, I earned this with my hardship. This is my money, this is my salary. But according to the law, you are not allowed to destroy it. You are not allowed to use it otherwise than what is legally stipulated use of that. So Jesus said, bring me a money, bring me a denarius. What is in there? The face of Caesar, the inscription of Caesar. So Jesus said, Jesus did not answer them by yes or no. They said that then, give back to Caesar what is Caesar. But moreover, Jesus said, give to the Lord what is the Lord's. Amen. So upon hearing this, you know, the Herodians, the Pharisee, they were astonished. Bumilib sila. They were not expecting that answer. They were silenced. They were quiet. They marveled. They were amazed. And they abandoned their plan, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. For me, my dear brothers and sisters, when Jesus said, 
Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar and give to God what is God's. Jesus was clearly putting a distinction between two kingdoms. Again, we said in this pulpit, when Jesus Christ came, he came to preach this new kingdom. That's the first message of the Bible. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. So there is this kingdom of this world that we are living in, temporarily at least. Amen? And who rules this kingdom of world? The like of Caesar, the government. But Jesus preached, teach, and brought this new kingdom, the kingdom of God. Amen, church? And there is a distinction on, on that. Amen? The kingdom of this world is the natural kingdom. Amen? But as a Christian, as a believer, we are a citizen of another kingdom, not of this world, where Jesus is our King of Kings. Isn't it? You can find that in John 18, 36, which it says in there that the Lord's kingdom is not of this world. Amen? And like we say, as a Christian, yes, we temporarily live in this natural kingdom, but our permanent residency, our permanent status is the kingdom of God. Amen, church? Under this natural kingdom, under this physical kingdom, my dear brothers and sisters, you and me have certain obligations. And that involves material things. Amen? We have obligation to the state that when you earn, you have to pay taxes. As a kingdom of state, you have to give contribution to your na national insurance. Amen, church? As a citizen of this kingdom, you need to make sure that you promote um, uh, human rights. Amen, church? You need to make sure that you promote human rights. You cannot just go to a person on the street and beat them. You cannot do that. As a member of your neighborhood, you have a certain obligation. 11 o'clock at night, you should not be making noise or commotion. Amen, church? So as a part of this natural kingdom, as a part of this community, we have our natural obligation. Even the Ten Commandments of the Lord, Exodus chapter 20, commandment number 5, what is our obligation? Honoring our parents. Honoring our mother and father. Amen. Amen. Commandment number 6, we shall not murder. Commandment number 7, we shall not commit adultery. Number 8, we shall not steal. Number 9, we shall not give false testimony. Number 10, we shall not covet. Amen, church. But as a Christian, under Christ, we have a certain obligation as well. That's the reason why gave to Caesar what is to Caesar and gave to the Lord what is to the Lord. Amen. And as a Christian, under Christ, we have as well that eternal obligations. Amen. And making sure that we give to the Lord what the Lord demands. We give to the Lord what the Lord asks, what the Lord wants us to give Him in return. Amen, church? Matthew chapter 6, verse 20, Jesus said, It is natural to store wealth in this earth. But I'm warning you, wealth in this earth can be corrupted, can be stolen, can be, um, uh, uh, um, can be attacked by vermin. Amen. But Jesus said, store in the kingdom of God. Store in that eternal storage where the, sea, the, the thief cannot come and steal it, where the vermin in muth cannot destroy it. 
where there is no expiry date. Amen, church? So as a Christian, yes, while we live in this earth, we have a natural obligation, but we have an eternal obligation as well. Give to Caesar what is Caesar and give to God what is to God. Amen. Amen, church. What, what is the reason why that the government or Caesar minted these coins? What is the reason why that Caesar created these coins, my dear brothers and sisters? He did not only create a coin, he stamped his face in it and he stamped his name in it. Amen. So it's just lawful for him to ask something in return. It belongs to him. His face, his name is in it. So it's just lawful for him to ask for some of it to return to him. Amen, church. Amen. He is in every right to do so. After all, his name and his image is there. So let us give to Caesar what is due to Caesar. Amen. But God, my dear brothers and sisters, has minted the soul. Your soul, my soul. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. What did the Lord said? The Lord created man according to his image and likeness. And in his likeness, he created them, my dear brothers and sisters. So God created your soul. God created you and me. And put his stamp, put his inscription in there. Amen, church. So as a humankind, let us make sure that we give to God what belongs to God. Amen. Amen. You belong to God. I belong to God. We all belong to God. God created us. So would it be proper? Would it be reasonable for us to say that because I belong to God, that I ought to give myself to God? Absolutely. Amen. Yeah. Would it be reasonable, my dear brothers and sisters? In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 to 4, David's favorite verse, This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved. To come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen, church. God wants all men who He created according to His image and likeness to be saved. God created humankind that belongs to Him. And His desire is for us to be saved, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. He wants us to be in relationship with Him. He wants to spend eternity with us in glory. Amen, church? So let us give to the Lord what is due to His name. Amen? Ibigay natin sa Panginoon kung ano yung para sa Panginoon. First commandment, the Lord said, You shall have no other gods before me. Amen. Are we thick on that? If we are taking boxes? Amen. Are we thick on that? You shall not make for yourselves an idol. Again, idol is not only carvings. An idol is anything that can take the place of the Lord in our lives. The third commandment, you shall not misuse my name in vain. That's what God said. In the fourth commandment, remember the day of the Lord to keep it holy, to come to worship. Amen, church? Amen. We are half empty. Amen. I thought we belong to God. Is it reasonable to give to God what is due to His name? 
2 Corinthians 1.22 God has set His seal of ownership on us and He put His Holy Spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. Galatians 2.20 we have been crucified with Christ. Therefore, it is no longer us that lives. But Christ, Christ, the, 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 uh, the reason in crucified Christ dwells in live in us. So therefore, let us give to him what is due to him. Amen, church. If Christ is in you, you know what would Christ would want to do? For us to go to church, for us to live according to the Holy Spirit, to keep in step with the Holy Spirit, for us to walk according to the path of the Holy Spirit. But are we in conformity with that? Are we in conformity with that, my dear brothers and sisters? Are we giving ourselves, our life to the Lord? So as a final question, I want to challenge us again this afternoon. Whose image is in us? Whose inscription we bear? Whose? It's Christ. Amen. Amen. It's Christ. Amen, church? Amen. Therefore, let us surrender to Christ our body. Let us give to Christ our body. Let us give to Christ everything in us. The Lord gifted you with profession. You became professional because the Lord has a use for you. Render to God your profession. You are given talent and skills. The Lord has a use for you. Render to God your talent and skills. The Bible says, your gift is serving, then serve with the whole heart. Your gift is giving, then give cheerfully. Amen, church. Your gift is setting up in the church, then come early. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us give to God what is due to God. Romans 12, chapter 1, verse 2. Let us urge one another. Let us not just listen to Paul urging the Romans. But this afternoon, let us urge si sister. Let us urge si brother. Let us urge the church. Let us urge one another. Saying that in view not only of God's grace and mercy, but your love. We are going to sing that song in a minute. And I encourage us, my dear brothers and sisters, that let the message of that song, Christ's love dwells in us richly. Let the message of that song minister to us. So as a closing encouragement, let us urge one another People who are watching with us online, we encourage you, we urge you, and we want you to urge us back as well in return. That let us offer our bodies as a living sacrifice to God. It is God, it is God who, who is inscribed in us. It is no longer us, but Christ is inscribed in us. Christ is living in us. So therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, let us give to God what is due to His name. Let us live our life as a living sacrifice. I guess there is probably a sacrifice that is pleasing to God and a sacrifice that is not pleasing to God. So let's choose the type, the kind of sacrifice that is pleasing to God. All of us who come to church is a form of sacrifice. All of us who does not sleep in the night when it is your bedtime because you want to pray is a sacrifice to God. But there is a sacrifice that is pleasing, honorable, and acceptable to God. 
And my dear brothers and sisters, that is not upon you. When Cain offered to the Lord, his desire is for his sacrifice to be honored. Cain did not went in there with saying that, oh, I will uh, this sacrifice, I will sacrifice this. I know that the Lord will not be pleased with this sacrifice. No. In Cain's heart, he mean it. He hoped that his sacrifice will be pleasing and acceptable to the Lord, but it was not. So even with us, my dear brothers and sisters, amen church, God is in us, God inscribed himself towards us. So let's give to the Lord what is due his name. Not 99%, but not even 100%. It's what is pleasing, holy, and acceptable to the Lord. Amen, church. The story of that publican and the story of that widow, the publican during that time gave probably hundreds of thousands, but it was not honored. The woman just gave probably a cent, but the Lord said the publican just gave his spare time, but this woman gave her life. We are not even talking about your tithes and offering here. We're not even talking about our mere offering here. It's about surrendering to the Lord our whole being, spirit, body, and soul. Amen, church? Let us stand up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, it is the first uh, Sunday today. And can I please invite two willing soul to come and help us usher the communion. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Yes, oh Jesus. Hallelujah. I know it is the third straight time that we will be partaking the communion, but my dear brothers and sisters, it is a great honor and privilege to be able to partake of what represents as the body and blood of the Lord. Amen, church. Our most gracious Lord and heavenly God, Lord, thank you for the life of our dearly beloved brother John and sister Krisa. We thank you so much for their life, O God. Thank you for the desire, Lord, to be your bearers this afternoon. Father, we pray that you honor those very desires. And Father, we pray that as they bear, Father, our element for communion this afternoon, give them a clean heart. Give them up your spirit. Lord, give them a clean hands so that as they go around and distribute these elements, it's as if, Lord, we are receiving them directly from you. Father, we thank you for this element, this bread that symbolizes your body, and this drink that symbolizes your blood, O oh Jesus. The two vital elements as we commemorate your life, your suffering, your death and resurrection in that cross. Father, we pray that you cleanse and sanctify these elements in the raw form, that as we partake of them, it will serve to us what you have intended for. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. As we wait for the element, I just want us to remember the Lord's goodness. Just want us to remember the Lord, especially those final moment of His fleshly or earthly ministry. Father, 
Lord, enable us to partake freely without hindrances in the observation of communion this afternoon. Father, I repent from all my sins, failures and shortcomings, and from everything that may hinder me in partaking this afternoon. Father, allow me and enable me to freely partake of your body and blood in remembrance for all the good and wonderful things that you have accomplished in the cross. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because it is you who is in our heart. It is your name that is inscribed in the deepest core of our spirit. Therefore, O God, enable us to be able to honor you this afternoon through communion. Enable us to partake of the communion with gladness and confidence in our heart. Let us raise the bread. For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. On the night He was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread. Let us raise the cup. In the same way, after supper, he took a cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Let's drink the cup. Hallelujah. Let's thank the Lord, church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the power. Thank you for your power through the blood. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Church, can we please welcome the music team back? And let us continue to allow the Lord to minister unto us as we sing that fourth song, the final uh, song of our worship lined up. And it is the Lord who is in us. It is the name of the Lord who is inscribed in us. Amen, church? So as we worship the Lord through this song, let us allow the message of the love of Christ to penetrate our very core. My dear brothers and sisters, if there remains in your heart, people online, this is for you as well. If there's anything that remains in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, in your body, in your emotion, any pain, any frustrations, any burden, let us bring it to the Lord. Amen. The power of resurrection did not stop last Sunday. But the Christ who resurrected on that cross, on that first resurrection Sunday, is the same Christ 
who is in you is the same Christ who is with us in this house of the Lord this afternoon. And He is gonna be the same Christ that if you are willing this afternoon will minister in you. Amen. Oh, yeah.
Let that be our prayer. How great, how strong. Let's go back to that. Let this be our prayer, church. How great, how strong, how awesome is our God. I stand in all the never failing love. Come on, church, all are invited to say thank you, Lord, for your love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your love. You are an awesome and amazing God. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Hallelujah. We are not worthy. We are not worthy of your love, Lord. But thank you because you have accorded it to us anyway. And Father God, all the days of our life, we cannot thank you enough. Lord, thank you for the victory of today. Thank you, Father, for everything that you have allowed us to experience. Thank you, Father God, for your words, for your encouragement. Thank you, Father, for the wonderful opportunity to corporately worship you. Thank you, Lord, for the lives of all the brothers and sisters who came to fellowship with us today, including the lives of the brothers and sisters who fellowship with us online. Lord, as we culminate today's divine worship celebration, Father, we surrender everything in your name. Father, help us. Father, enable us. 
that Lord, even in our daily walk, in our daily life, O God, even as we step out, Lord, of this worship place, Lord, at Lord, may we be able to be in a position to give you what is due your name. To give our life that is due to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, O Lord. Thank you, God. And may the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship and the company of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Church, let us go therefore to offer to God our life as He is due it. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of offering. Thank you, Lord.
Hallelujah. Let us, uh, can we please invite Brother Chris? Um, uh, he celebrated his birthday um, uh, uh, when he was away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He celebrated his birthday when he was away, so we were not able to have the opportunity and chance to greet him a happy birthday and to pray for him. Hallelujah. Okay, music. Hallelujah. May the Lord God bless you, our dear brother Chris. Happy birthday. Um, I think we need to sing that song. You need to, um, uh, the praise goes up and <laughs> the rain comes down. You need to, uh, <laughs> comes up, the rain comes down. Hey, amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, before we pray, is there anything that uh, you want to encourage the church, my dear brother? Our dear brother, anything that uh, you want to say to encourage the church or anything? The Lord loves us so much. Amen. And he has wonderful plans for us. And it is wonderful to be here. Ha. Yeah. Thank you, Father, for all that you give me and all that you show me in terms of Rendering to Caesar what's Caesar's and to the Lord what is the Lord's. So important. Amen. Yeah. Our dear brother, hallelujah, our most gracious Lord and heavenly God. Indeed, Lord, as uh, Chris is so blessed and happy to be in your presence. Father God, this church, our dear brothers and sisters, Father, in behalf of everyone, truly is indeed a grand privilege, Father, to be able to worship and honor you with him alongside us. So, Lord, we thank you so much. We thank you for the wonderful opportunity and privilege. We thank you, Father, for his life, Father God. You know, Father, we know, Lord, that that life hasn't been easy, we know, Father God, that on that path, Lord, uh, there were many pitfalls, if you like. But Father, thank you so much because the same grace in mercy that was shed on the cross, Father, that has overflowed in that cross, Lord, is the same grace in mercy, moreover, the same love, Lord, that our dear brother Chris in here clings on, on his day to day. Father God, our prayer is that you may continue to enable him physically, his health and well-being, Father God, to be able, Father God, to continuously be in balance, to be able, Father God, to allow him to continue to draw nearer and closer to you, Father God. Lord, we continue to entrust unto you all the desires of his heart. Father God, met it according to your riches in glory. And Lord, we thank you so much as this uh, whole uh, congregation and assembly, Father, express our love and release our uh, blessing, Father. We speak blessing upon his life, Father God. We thank you so much, Lord, and we thank you that we will see more of him, Father God. Thank you for his prayer that he is learning day by day to be able to give to Caesar what is due to Caesar, but more than that, to be able to give to you what is due to you. So thank you so much, Father God. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. May the Lord God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you.